I give you one true story. <coughs> Kuwait is a very, very wealthy nation. Before they saw oil, people used to go out and work in different countries. One man went to India. He found a job there and he was working there, Kuwaiti. And when the country saw oil, the leaders called their people back to say, come, you know what? We have discovered oil and mashallah, the country is very wealthy and we're going to give everyone and a lot and so on. So this man came back. And this is a true story mentioned by one of the scholars in Kuwait. He says the man came back from India. He was working there. And when he had his own business now and it grew and started flourishing, he called over the son of the man whom he was working for. He called him over from India and said, come work for us. And then he told his own son, that, listen son, I want you to go out of your way to be kind and nice to this particular boy. And I want you to make his stay as comfortable as possible. And he used to tell him every other day, how is the boy? How are you treating him? What's going on? So one day the son asks the father, why are you so bothered about this particular boy? He says, son, let me tell you. When I worked with his father, they treated me so badly that a day came when their son needed to come and work by us. I don't want you to treat him in such a way that a day will come when your children will have to go and work for his children. Treat him well. Treat him with respect. Today, we have people working for us. Number one, Muslims. I'm talking of Muslims. Sorry, because and as a Muslim, I believe that I have the right to encourage Muslims to do the right thing. Don't many Muslims underpay? See, I, Wallahi, in this crowd, I saw so many doing this. That means we have a problem. Wherever I've been, they've done the same. Don't Muslims delay payments? You work for a Muslim, you can forget about the word promotion. It doesn't come. You can forget about the word increment. Perhaps it might come. They will consider you whether they're paying on the 30th or the 1st or the 3rd or the 7th or the 10th, maybe. Might work for someone who's not a Muslim. 29th, your salary is in. After four months, you can calculate that you're going to get an increment. After a year or two, you can know that you're going to get a promotion. Go for work for a Muslim. That is why the Ummah is suffering today. We have qualities that even the non-Muslims don't have. In a negative way. And we are supposed to be having qualities that far outshine the others. Increase the man's wage. Increase his salary a little bit. Allah's given you, give him. Subhanallah, in this way, what will happen? There'll be mahabba, there'll be love. People will want to work for Muslims. Is that really the case? It's not the case. Another thing has come to my mind. Amazing story. And, and I'll say it with names because it's, it's true. You can actually check it out. The emirate of Sharjah, the ruler there, he decided, you know, all the imams of the masjids and all the muaddins were going to increase their salary to a professional worker and give each one of them a house with five bedrooms and a motor vehicle. And we will take care of the needs of their children and their hospital bills and the list goes on. Go and check it. You can verify this news on the internet. You can hear him say it. Why? He said, Wallahi, these people are teaching our children. They are in the masjid. When the man says, Allahu Akbar, he should not be worried about how am I going to feed my son. Now, I'm not telling you what to do. But I'm sure you got the message. With the way we treat our scholars, wallahi, it's, it's very difficult. Very difficult. Sometimes people say, I don't want to be a scholar because you know how they are treated. You know what happens. You know, what future do you have? They said, you know what? One thing I do know definitely is from among the suicide rate that happens, and may Allah protect all of us. I don't know of a scholar who's committed suicide. The contentment that is there is something beyond imagination. You might have a house things. He said, Alhamdulillah. It's a proper answer, right? You ask the, the, the teacher or the imam or the sheikh, how many children do you have? By right, most probably, he, generally, the average is more than those who have more money, right? Generally, they'll say 10, talk about myself, 10 with a few grandchildren. 
How's things? Alhamdulillah. People probably think you're a multi-billionaire by now. They don't know the struggles. Why? Because it's between you and Allah. It's okay. We have no struggles. Why? Allah takes care. The figure doesn't matter. Allah says we'll give you contentment. Allah Almighty has guaranteed your sustenance. Not the luxuries, but the basics. The luxuries are a bonus. Bonus from Allah. So if you say I'm struggling, but you got a decent salary, it's because you want to live a standard beyond yours. Come down again. You don't have to go and eat all the time at places where, you know, you don't even have to eat out, by the way. You can eat at home. Cost you, it'll cost you much less. A man who fills his belly with a one pound meal, he still fills his belly. The other guy filled his belly with a hundred pound meal. Yes. Doesn't it happen? We went into a restaurant. Let me not say where and which restaurant. And subhanallah, we ordered something and I thought, wow, this place is quite expensive. Mashallah, you know, 45 quid for something. Wallahi, they, bring, they brought a big plate with two, three things in the plate and nice design on it and all that. And you know, that's it. I saw all these people next to us going crazy, taking pictures. And they said, this is for the gram. Instagram. I said, my brother, this is supposed to be for my stomach. Yeah. 